Hello everybody, my name is Leo and with this video we share a direct comparison between the Moore G150, the G200, the G250 and the G300. First of all, we will hear the four units in action with the demo song, then we will compare the features and technical characteristics of the four units with a very detailed comparison chart, then we will hear more sound also comparing the units with the real tube amp and finally I will give you my two cents. So I hope you enjoy and please subscribe and hit the bell, it's gonna help me to make more videos like this. Let's start with the demo song. Now check the differences between the four units among the following parameters Amp, cabs, mics, bank, patches, presets, effects, MIDI, input outputs, foot switches, expression pedal, screen, looper, drum machine, ADA conversion, third party IRs, special features, power dimension, weight and price. First of all we have 55 amps with 26 cabs in the G150, 55 amps plus 10 slots and 26 cabs and 10 mix in the G200, 70 amps plus 10 slots, 32 cabs and 10 mix built in in the G250, while the G300 offers 108 amps and 43 cabs and 21 mix. The G300, other than having more amps, cabs and mics, have two extra features. The first one is the possibility to combine two microphones to make a cab and the other one is the possibility to also have the sound of the room called early reflection. These are very good options that enhance the value of the G300. Furthermore, I would mention the possibility to load AMP profiles done with the G Labs app available in the G200. Video about it in the description below or card above. This is gonna be added to the G250 and 300 with future firmware updates, while it's not gonna be available for the G150 because of some some technical limitation of the unit. Furthermore, the G150 and 200 have 200 presets, while the G250 has 85 banks, each of three patches, with a total amount of 255 patches. The G300, on the other hand, has 64 banks, each of four patches, with a total amount of 256 presets. As regards effects, the G150 and the G200 have 151 effects with nine blocks. The G250 has 180 effects distributed in 11 blocks, while the G300 has 1317 effects but in 15 blocks. Another thing to point out is that the effect chain of the G150 is fixed, while it is flexible for the other units. The G150 and 200 have no MIDI, while the G250 has a MIDI in or a MIDI out, but not both of them at the same time, while the G300 has a MIDI in port and a MIDI out port. As regards inputs and outputs, both the G150 and 200 have 
a guitar input, unbalanced stereo output, aux in and headphone out, while the G250 has a mono effect loop, a stereo balance and unbalanced output, the aux in and headphone out. The G300, on the other hand, has the same in and out of the G250, but the external loop is in stereo. And this is a great option that the G300 offers, as you can connect, for instance, your favorite delay pedal. The G150 has two foot switches, the 200 has three foot switches, the 250 has five foot switches, while the G300 has 10 foot switches, also all with a built-in expression pedal. All the units but the G150 have an input for the secondary expression pedal. The screen of the G300 is the bigger one, the one on the G150 is the smaller, while the G200 and 250 share the same screen. The G150 offers an 80 seconds stereo looper, the 252 seconds, the 250 70 seconds, while the 300 30 minutes. All the units but the G300 have a built-in drum machine. As regards ADA conversion and USB capabilities, they both offer 44.1 kHz at 24-bit conversion and a two-channel audio interface. Here it's worth noticing that the G300 has a 114dB dynamic range, while the 250 has 100dB of dynamic range, and the G200 and 150 shares a 98dB of dynamic range. This basically tells us that the G300 converters are better and quieter than the one of the 250, that on the other hand are better than the ones of the G200 and 150. And this is pretty important in my opinion for sound and feel. They all offer the possibility to load third-party IRs, but the G150 and 200 can load IRs up to 512 sample points, where the 250 and the G300 offers 2048 sample points IRs. Therefore, the cap simulation of the G250 and the G300 should sound better than the ones of the G150 and 200. As regards special features, I would mention the OTG capability of the G150 that allows us to record music via our phone, the possibility for the G200 to load profiles captured with the G Labs app, that is pretty amazing, the tone capture capabilities of the G250 that is only related to amp tone capture, while with the G300 you can capture not only an amp but also your guitar or a stone pedal. Furthermore, the G300 has a built-in synth which is really very nice. Then we have the power needs, all the units run at 9 volt and the amperes are respectively 300 mA, 600, 1000 and finally 3000 for the G300. As regards weight and dimension, the G150 is the smaller and lighter, obviously, and also the cheaper. So finally, obviously, the G300 is the big brother. Its price is higher and it offers more features compared to the other units. In my opinion, the most important differences where the G300 is better are dual mic and early reflections that add a touch of realism to your tone, then the stereo loop offered only by the G300 is uh, pretty important for me, as for instance, I can connect the Strymo Volante in stereo. Lastly, a very important characteristic of the G300 is that it has better converters with 114 dB of dynamic range. And this is pretty important because it has an impact on our tone. The G250, on the other hand, has features not available in the G200 and G150, like the balanced XLR outputs that allow for longer cable with less noise and are pretty handy in live situation. And lastly, I would mention the possibility to connect the unit to your amp with the four cable method. The G200, on the other hand, is at the moment the only unit that allows to load and profiled with the G Labs app from the Moore Studio Cloud. Please notice that this feature should be added to the G250 and 300 with future firmware updates, while it's not gonna be available for the G150 for its technical limitations.
Now, final considerations here. First of all, let me say that the Moore G pedalboard's lineup is pretty solid. In fact, I think that they cover pretty well the price range from 160 to 700 euro or dollars. In fact, the G150 price is around 160, the G200 is 260, the G250 is 435, and the G300 price is around 680. And actually, the other pedalboard builders are following some of the G pedalboard releases as regards their price point. For instance, the Line 6 Pod Go price follows the release of the G250 and compete with it at almost the same price range. I mean, around 450. So it's kinda more delivered a pedalboard in a specific price point and the other builders follows. Now, let me talk about the main selling points of each pedalboard. I think that the main G150 strength is its dimension and its price. And it's a perfect solution for practicing guitar, in my opinion. The G200 the main feature for me is the possibility to load profiles done with the GE Labs app. Actually, I've done a video about it that you can find in the description below. The G250 is a very all-round pedalboard. It has three features that, in my opinion, allows it to be a pretty solid solution also for live situations. That are the balanced XLR outputs that allows for longer cable without noise, the MIDI in, that let you add controllers and foot switches to have a more flexible solution while you are jigging, and the possibility to connect the G250 with your amp with the four cable method. Then we have the G300, that of course adds even more features compared to the G250, and the more important ones, in my opinion, are the two mix options and the early reflection management, that add a touch of realism to your sound. Then we have the synth and the stereo FX loop, that for instance allows us to add our favorite stereo delay pedal in the FX chain, like for instance a Strymon Volante. I would also point out two technical characteristics that are, in my opinion, important for the sound and feel, that are the dynamic range and the sample points of the cap simulations, where the G250 has 2048 sample points, like the G300, that add realism to the cap simulation sound, and the dynamic range of the G300 that is 114 dB, where the G250 has 100 dB, and the G150 and 200 have 98 dB. This means that the G300 has better converters, followed by the G250 and then the G200 and the G150 that are on pair. All in all, the unit with the greatest value for the money, in my opinion, is the G250. It has the minimum amount of foot switches that I would use in live situation and is further expandable with MIDI. It has also balanced XLR outputs and allows us to use the four cable method so that you can use the G250 with your amp. That is not possible with the G150 or the G200. And I think that with the addition of the possibility to load AMP profiles from the Moore Studio Cloud with future firmware updates is gonna become an even better unit. These were my final two cents. Please let me know in the comment below your opinions and what is your favorite pedalboard out of these four and if the sound differences that you may have heard in the demo song or in the more sound section of this video are a key deciding factor for you. We have now reached the end of this video, I hope you enjoyed and if you did it, please subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell and leave a thumbs up, it will be of a great help. If you're interested in my music, you can check out a playlist of songs of mine in the description below, where there is also a link to the streaming services distributor that I use, that is DistroKid. If you use that link, you will have a discount and I will earn some money, so you're gonna actually help the channel. That's all for now, thank you for watching, see you in the next video, bye bye.